Hey everyone, Raif Darazi here, and this is your latest HIV news video. I'll be covering 10 articles covering topics ranging from U.S. funding cuts threatening prevention programs and trials to the Gates Foundation's push for a cure. We'll look at how immune recovery lowers cancer risk, progress in mRNA and long-acting HIV treatments, and how gender-affirming care improves outcomes for trans people. Plus, we'll highlight HIV awareness efforts in AAPI communities and the global fallout from Elon Musk's shutdown of key prevention programs and more. Guys, after a lengthy hiatus, I'm happy to say that these HIV news videos should be coming out fairly regularly now. I've recently hired someone to help me with script writing as well as editing, which helps me tremendously. Thank you to Jane for putting this together. The ultimate goal is to have these news videos coming out every week. A huge shout out and thank you to Dennis Nelson for the super thanks donation that you sent to me on my 40th birthday in May. Thank you, Dennis. Okay, and jumping right in. Number one, LAist, Southern California Public Radio. LA County's HIV prevention work threatened by federal funding cuts. LA County's HIV prevention programs are at serious risk due to proposed federal budget cuts that would eliminate over 19 million in CDC funding. As a result, the county has told 39 healthcare providers their contracts will end on May 31st threatening vital services like HIV testing and access to PrEP medication. Experts warn that this could lead to a 40% increase in new HIV cases. Local and state leaders are urging the California government to step in with emergency funding to avoid a public health crisis. But there's a funding gap in June unless quick action is taken. And this is something I've been aware of for, I would say, the last month. I've received emails myself from local HIV organizations just informing the public of these cuts and that LA has decided to remove funding, especially for things like HIV PrEP. And we can reasonably expect that there would be an increase in HIV diagnoses here in the coming months once this funding is removed and once HIV PrEP and other services are removed from the county. Number two, genetic engineering and biotechnology news. ASGCT 2025 Gates Foundation doubling down on HIV cure. At the ASGCT 2025 conference, Dr. Mike McCune from the Gates Foundation shared a hopeful update. While the U.S. government may be cutting back on HIV funding, the Gates Foundation is doubling down on efforts to find a cure. McCune emphasized that daily HIV treatment isn't enough and aims for a one-time long-lasting solution. With over 40 million people living with HIV worldwide and treatment access still limited, the foundation is backing research into innovative therapies like gene editing and immune-based approaches. Their goal is a safe, affordable, single-shot cure that works globally, especially in underserved areas. And this is something that I think is really important for us to all grapple with as, as we're moving forward. We've been so reliant specifically on the U.S. and also government funding that we have to start getting creative and finding other sources of funding, such as the Bill Gates Foundation, not just here in the U.S., but internationally as well. This has put a huge spotlight on clinics and other organizations internationally realizing, OK, we can't just assume that this funding is always going to be coming in from the U.S., and we need to be less reliant on one income source. So in that sense, it's a good thing, and that's how we need to double down and focus on that. But it's still, of course, a tragedy, the way that funding has been cut so dramatically for so many organizations and countries around the world, and how it has been done in such an insensitive and inhumane way. Number three, Global Health Now. U.S. funding cuts stop crucial HIV research work in its tracks. A groundbreaking HIV vaccine trial in South Africa was suddenly halted just days before launch due to major U.S. funding cuts. This decision has left life-saving medicine sitting unused and clinics empty, threatening progress in a country with the highest number of people living with HIV. Researchers say years of work and international partnerships have been undone overnight, putting countless lives and careers at risk. Still, there's a glimmer of hope as local scientists look for new funding sources to keep the fight against HIV alive and rebuild what was lost. Again, this is just reiterating the point that I was making. And also, let's be clear, this is not just like a water spigot that you can turn off and on. And as soon as you turn the spigot back on, now you have funding, you have water. That's not how it works, because while this funding has been turned off, Things like clinics have been shut down, people have been laid off, and those people who were laid off have looked for other work. They're not just sitting around waiting for the possibility that they might get their job back. They're actively getting different jobs. So let's say the spigot gets turned on, we get funding again to some of these countries. Well, guess what? Now the people that they would have hired or had on their payroll before are no longer available. So now they have to find new people. And that just doesn't happen overnight especially when the trust has been broken that the, that someone working in this field might not have job security. Why would they want to invest their time and energy and money into a career that might evaporate overnight? 
So that presents a huge problem. And then you have clinics that have been shut down. Like if, if clinics can't pay their rent, then they lose the space. They can't just go back to their landlord and say, oh, like, I'm ready now. Let me have the space back. That's not how it works. If you can't pay rent, you're out. It's done. It's over. So in order for these clinics to become operational again, aside from hiring people, they need to find a space. They need to be able to open it and get it permitted and who knows whatever else. The point being that the damage has been done. And in order to undo that damage, it's going to take months, if not years of work in, in a physical, practical sense. But then also the trust that has been built with these communities over time, over years, over decades, that's been broken too. And that takes longer to rebuild because people are scared and they're skeptical, reasonably so. So that's the unfortunate long-term effects of it. Number four, pause. Health, life, and HIV, good CD4 cell recovery linked to lower cancer risk for people with HIV. A new study shows that people with HIV who have strong immune recovery measured by higher CD4 or T cell counts are much less likely to develop cancer, especially cancers linked to infections. Even with effective HIV treatment, those with poor immune recovery face higher cancer risks. This highlights the importance of early HIV diagnosis and starting treatment right away to protect the immune system. Researchers say consistent care and regular cancer screenings are essential, especially since people with HIV often face barriers to getting proper cancer treatment. Number five, vax before travel. HIV vaccine candidates pathway to broadly neutralizing antibodies. Scientists from Scripps Research, IAVI, and Global Partners have made exciting progress towards an HIV vaccine. In two early stage trials using mRNA technology like the COVID-19 vaccines, researchers showed that they could activate special immune cells needed to eventually create broadly neutralizing antibodies, powerful defenses that can block many HIV strains, not just one. One trial tested a two-step approach, using a priming shot followed by a different booster, which led to strong immune responses in over 80% of participants. Importantly, the vaccine worked well in both North American and African participants, bringing us one step closer to a globally effective HIV vaccine. I think this is so interesting and fascinating that something like mRNA, which if you weren't aware, was originally developed to potentially create an HIV vaccine or an HIV cure and failed decades ago when it was originally developed, then that same technology was able to be used for COVID, for the COVID vaccine in, the, in 2020. And now it's coming full circle again and looks like it may help with uh, broadly neutralizing antibodies in a potential vaccine. This, is, this just further emphasizes my point that funding and research into HIV helps not just the HIV community and with tre treatment and prevention and a potential cure, but it also has you know, ripple effects to so many other viruses and diseases out there. And now it's cool to see how it not only rippled out, but it's rippling back in. Number six, pause. Health, life, and HIV. Gender affirming care linked to better HIV outcomes for trans people. A new study shows that transgender people who receive gender affirming hormone therapy tend to have better HIV outcomes. As more patients at two LGBTQ plus health clinics started hormone therapy, HIV rates went down and more people with HIV were able to control the virus. The study found that hormone therapy was linked to a 37% lower chance of having HIV and a 44% lower chance of having uncontrolled HIV. Experts believe that gender affirming care improves mental health, builds trust in healthcare providers and encourages people to stay in care and take their medications, leading to better health overall. And this is just more evidence among the throngs of evidence that are already out there that HIV can't just be treated as its own thing, that it's just a virus. And if you treat it, then the person's okay. There are so many like intersectional issues that have to be addressed. Mental health, fitness, longevity, aging, you know, socioeconomic, all these things play a role in being able to control the HIV epidemic at large. Number seven, pause. National Asian and Pacific Islander HIV AIDS Awareness Day. May 19th was National Asian and Pacific Islander HIV AIDS Awareness Day. This day raises awareness about HIV in Asian, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander communities, which often face stigma and low testing rates. While HIV diagnoses among Asians have dropped, cases among Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders have risen. Testing remains low. Only 22% of Asians in the U.S. have ever been tested. Poverty, lack of health insurance, and cultural stigma make accessing HIV care harder for many in these communities. This campaign encourages open conversations, education, and testing to fight misinformation and improve health outcomes. Number eight, pause. Duravarine, 
Islatravir treatment combo shows continued promise. Merck's new once daily HIV treatment combining Draverine and Islatravir continues to show promise. In two major studies, people who switched from their current treatment to this new combo pill maintained viral suppression over 48 weeks, with the results similar to or even better than their previous regimens. This treatment was generally safe and well tolerated, with fewer concerns about serious side effects or resistance. Importantly, the studies used a lower dose of Islatravir, avoiding the immune related issues seen in earlier trials. This combo offers a simpler, effective option for people living with HIV, especially those looking to switch treatments. Guys, obviously more options is better than less, and um, presumably because this is a two-drug treatment rather than three, which is common in a lot of the single-dose or single-daily-dose treatments, then this should have less longer-term toxicity as well. Number nine, two-minute medicine. Twice-yearly lenacapavir prevents HIV more effectively than daily FTDF. A recent study found that twice-a-year injections of lenacapavir were much more effective at preventing HIV than the daily pill FTDF, especially among men and gender-diverse people who have sex with men. Lenacapavir lowered the risk of HIV by 89% compared to the daily pill, and both options had similar safety profiles. This new long-acting treatment could make HIV prevention easier for people who struggle with taking a pill every day offering a more convenient and powerful way to stay protected. Number 10, last but not least, The Guardian. Elon Musk says Doge didn't cut HIV programs, but it threw a miracle drug into chaos. Elon Musk claims that his action didn't cut HIV AIDS programs, but global health experts say otherwise. Since the shutdown of USAID by Musk's team, many prevention efforts, especially those using PrEP drugs, have been thrown into chaos. Services across multiple countries stopped almost overnight, with massive drops in HIV prevention like testing, medication access, and condom distribution. One major casualty is the rollout of lenacapavir, a highly promising drug that can prevent HIV with just two shots a year. Experts call it the closest thing we have to a vaccine, but its future is now uncertain. Musk insists he'll fix any funding gaps, but so far the damage is already being felt around the world. And I'm not sure if this is, I can't like verify this or not, but I've seen on X and maybe some other socials that Elon Musk is no longer with Doge. So I don't know how relevant this is even anymore. Um, but yeah, it certainly did impact um, HIV programs globally, heavily, tremendously impacted these programs and continues to do so. All right, those are the articles for today. Links to all these articles can be found in the description box below this video. I encourage you to sign up for my mailing list. Link to that is also in the description box below this video. I'm continuing to build up the email database, and once I get my team fully hired and ready to go, we'll start sending even more HIV-related updates and content via email newsletter. Be sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get a notification every time a new video comes out and please share this with anyone who might find value in this content. That is the best way that you can support me and my channel. All right, until next time, cheers.